There is none beside you. All right, um, let's start. Um, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for joining in and thanks for uh, bearing with me. Uh, it has been not been able to connect to the other sites. But we are going to to go on. I'm going to talk about how to use your key. Um, have you ever wondered, like, if you have a key, you use a key on the wrong rock, you realize that that key cannot work. Every key must be used with the right lock. Most of you, you have, uh, you know, scriptures. You know scriptures, but you don't know how to use scriptures. I'm going, I'm going to, to show you how to let scriptures work for you. Because it's very important that you understand that the word of God has been given to us like keys. The Bible says, you think by knowing scriptures, you can know the kingdom of God. This is, this is what Jesus was rebuking the Pharisees. In other ways, it's, um, it's not just about knowing the scriptures, but it's having the revelation about the scriptures. I hope you all, you can get me well. I hope the sound is clear. I know we had a little bit of warfare trying to connect, which means today it's gonna unlock so many things. All right. Thanks, Hope. So you have to, Understand that by knowing scriptures, it doesn't mean it doesn't mean you are saved. It's actually seeing those scriptures become revelation in your life. It's when those scriptures begins to work. Um, The Bible talks about in the book of James, it talks about Satan himself, he knows the word of God and he trembles of it. Now, the word of God becomes effective. The word of God becomes effective in your life when, when you start Engaging the word of God with your spirit. What simply means is that you have to open your heart. When you open your heart and you believe in the scriptures, that's why the word meditate is very powerful. You ponder upon these scriptures. The word pondered, you think through, you begin to contemplate them. How can these scriptures be useful upon my life? I want you to understand that the word of God is like chewing bread. You need to know how to, ch to chew the bread properly. Otherwise, the blade might shock you. These scriptures, sometimes they can shock you if you don't chew them in the right way. You have to understand that Jesus, when he came to earth, he came to bring the kingdom of the Father. He came to bring the kingdom of heaven to earth. And earth was created for you and I. There have been battles since the day Adam handed over the earth to the devil by sinning, there have been always a battle for dominion. When you look at 
major industries. God is not mentioned in those major industries like Disney and many others. When you look at about things that God created like gold and silver, even today, there have been a battle for gold and silver. And mostly, it's people that do not know the Lord that battle those things. Now, you have to understand that God brought Jesus on earth so that the kingdom of God can be on earth. There are keys into God's kingdom that you have to understand that the kingdom of God the earth is supposed to be the copy of the kingdom. The way you see heaven that's how earth supposed to be before it was destroyed so when jesus came he came to restore all things to redeem all things to bring back the earth to its original form you have to understand that the kingdom of god the word kingdom as i've always said it has a dome and it has a king. Dome means a place. King means a person. So in heaven, it's a kingdom. Dome, the place. King, the person. Then God, he wants the kingship of heaven to be learned by men here on earth. God's dream and vision is to cut out the, the assignment of heaven on earth through his precious children. Every one of you that is on this Zoom, you have an assignment from an enemy. The battle you go through, it's because of the assignment that you go through. Sometimes the bigger the assignment, the bigger the challenge, because you know that you are called for something greater and powerful. That's why you never give up on your assignment, because you are created to carry the assignment of the kingdom of God on earth. You are the mirror of God. You are the image of heaven on earth. It's, it's very important that you understand that in Revelation chapter 5, verse 10, let me show you why Jesus came on earth. Uh, I would like somebody actually to read it. Revelation chapter 5, verse 10, so that way there is a participation. I just know as somebody a variable to read. If not, I can go ahead and read it. Yes, I can read. Oh Nadine, go ahead and read it. Revelation 5. Revelation chapter 5 is 10. And has <coughs> made us unto our God, kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Continue. Just that. We shall reign on the earth. We shall rule on earth. God has made us to be kings and priests. Now, what's the, if I may ask a person, someone can answer. What was the role of the priest in the Old Testament? 
Let me see if people understand the Old Testament. Um, what was the role of the priest in the Old Testament? Anyone can, you can. Uh, admit sure, sure. The, the, the role of the priest was to connect the people to God and God to the people, right? In terms of communicating with God, it had to go through the Levites and the priests. That's Where what, now, yes, go now ahead. In the New, I was just gonna say now, now in the New Testament, we can have a direct relationship and communicate directly with God. Yeah, that's correct. Um, so the, the role of the priest in the Old Testament, um, okay, let me see other comment. Yes, yes, to receive an offering. Yes, it was also to receive an offering. Um, the role of the priest on earth was to stand on the gap. To they were mediators between man and God to speak on behalf of God and to pray on behalf of um, so in the Old Testament, God did not talk to everybody direct. He only spoke to priests and prophets. Even before he spoke to prophets, he spoke first to the priest. The reason is the priest's work was to make a sacrifice. So they always gave two lambs. Two animals, two lamb, specifically. And without sport and without linko. They have to be sportless, flores lamb. So one, you have to, to do it for yourself and the other one for the people to sacrifice on, on behalf to repent on yourself, on your, to, first you repent yourself and you repent on behalf of people then you offer a sacrifice to say, God, forgive them. Then God would come and speak and then the priest would declare the blessing of God. Then also the law of the priest is to stop evil from happening on earth. Is to stop sin to continue on earth. Is to stop evil from continuing. The priest is stood on the gap in the area of intercession. Now you have to understand the word intercession simply means to intersect. Is to stand on the gap on behalf of someone. So when the priest prayed, angels came down and intersect. They intervene on behalf on behalf of the man who is going through a situation as the priest prayed. You have to understand that. It's very important. So intercession simply means inviting heaven to participate with you on earth. So, whatever the priest sacrifices mm -hmm. and gave an offering on behalf of the people, there was activation of blessings and angels. People even saw angels. So, the work of the priest is to stop the wickedness and the uncleanness and the demonic activities, spirits and principalities to be able to stop them through intercession and prayer. So we are all called into intercession and prayer. Now, I wanna ask another question. Thanks for, for R and Nikomi and, and Latoya that have contributed and Adin, atonement. Yeah, that's that's sin. That's thanks, Lana. 
my dear. Now, what was the role when the Bible says God is calling us as priests and kings? What's the role of the king here? Anyone can unmute and participate. What do you understand by the word? From Revelation 5 verse 10 about the role of the king. I think it's to have authority, you know, to have dominion and authority on the earth. So that's authority and dominion. The word dominion is, a, is huge. Readership. Also, to, to make sure like whatever decree or whatever order, whether it's from God or um, in whatever case, that it will be carried out by the people, like he have that level of, that level of authority. Yeah. So it's rulership, dominion. God's desire was never to control the earth, not to rule over the earth. God's desire is the children of man to reign on earth, to rule over the earth. The earth is on our leadership. Whatever happens on earth, it depends totally to the body of Christ and to the children of God. What a responsibility that we have. Whatever is happening on earth, it has to do with how children of God are responding to a situation, various of situation. How do you respond in your prayer war, life? How do you respond on the word? Now I mentioned that, that how to use the keys of the kingdom. Most people know the word, but they do not know how to use it. Most people preach against the word of God. For example, if you believe that being sick is a blessing, do not pray for healing for the sickness. If you believe that being poor is a blessing, do not pray for your daily bread. So now there is battles of words. A king upholds the words. The law of the king is to have a rulership, kingship, authority. Kings live by words. So you have a kingship anointing. What I mean by the anointing means the empowerment of the king. You have to understand the power of words. You cannot say, I hate poverty. You cannot say, I hate prosperity. You cannot say, I hate this. You cannot say, oh, I love being sick. Then I ask, then you are giving power over that. The battle on earth is not about the natural resources. The battle on earth is the enemy to try and take, take over your rights. Your right into the to dominion, to control the spiritual, spiritual world. You have to understand that you're so powerful as a king. A king has got servants and soldiers to order. The Bible is comparing you to be a king or a queen in the sense that you have angelic powers that are like police, military force, The secret service. Do you know when you're planning to go somewhere, God sends you the angels of the Lord ahead of time. Do you know if the president is visiting a place like, oh, they make a date like a president is visiting tomorrow. I can guarantee you a week before there is intelligent security. They have been already in the area 
getting all the informational information, intelligence, the word intelligence, they're getting the, the information that is in the area to know if the area is safe or if someone is plotting against the president, the, the, the secret service, they go around the drinking places. They even go in parties around the area just to ask, oh, they will, someone may just say, oh, I am, I'm just, uh, where are you from? I'm from Chicago. Oh, what are you doing here? Well, I just came to visit. No, is this, he, then he said, how is this area like? How is Los Angeles like? When people are asking, how is Los Angeles like? Is it safe? What is going on? He's correcting intelligence. He's correcting information. So that when the, before the president, the president comes in the area or the king comes in the area, they know how to protect him. You as a child of God, you don't have to be worried about your future. God has already sent angels ahead of your tomorrow. All you need is to carry out the assignment from heaven. God will send angels with you and before you. I like that prayer. My mother used always to pray for me that she used to pray for me. The angels of the Lord go with you. May traveling angels go before you. I didn't understand, but now, now I do. Because you are not an ordinary person. You have angels that go out to secure the area before you even arrive. Now, how do you activate them? By praying. Before you go to every area, you have to pray. Heavenly Father, I ask you to send forth angels in that city before I even alive. Father, I ask you to send angels in that working place tomorrow before I even alive. It, you, you don't know who are your enemies. You don't know who is planning, is plotting against you. That's why you're so powerful. The Bible says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. You know why? Because if they try to form, angels destroy those plans of the enemy concerning your destiny, concerning your life, concerning your tomorrow. The angels of the Lord, they undo the powers of darkness. Nothing that has been formed. In other words, if they are formed to destroy you, God has sent angels to destroy the destroyer. That's why you find that you find yourself like bad things are happening to other people, bad things are not happening to you. It's not just you are fortunate. No, it's because you have the Lord on your side. The angels are busy working. The secret agencies, the secret security, they're working behind the scene. That's why you don't have to be afraid of tomorrow. You don't have to be afraid of man. We don't have to be afraid of anyone. If someone is threatening you, if somebody is, is planning evil, do not worry about them. All you need is just to ask God for protection and God will activate the angels. When God activates the angels, the, the secret service of God, God is doing something on your behalf because that's the role of the king on earth. When the scripture says about we are priests, we know the priest is to create the spiritual atmosphere. Priest is to lead people to repentance. Priest is to, the work of the priest is also to beg God not to destroy you or destroy the world. The, the, the prayer of the righteous avails much. Do you know that no matter how wicked, how bad people are, if you make intercession in the area and cry out for forgiveness, you cry out, God does forgive. And God does make the judgment pass away. That's why, that's why if you're a prayer warrior, you, you're a priest, God will not judge your children. Even when they're your children, they're in the wrong, they will always be protected. Why? Because God will preserve that which you pray for. God will preserve your future. 
you have to understand the mercies of God, the grace of God. Why do you think like some people may have longed you, but no judgment comes upon them because they are protected by some, their mother's prayers. Maybe they are protected because there is an anointing of the king upon them. The angels are protecting that. They are preserving that. So when Daniel was in trouble, he prayed. And God sent forth angels to help him. Daniel was not fighting. Angels were fighting on his behalf. You have to understand what I'm sharing to you. It's very powerful that the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God is very powerful. Now, then the other thing that the king does, he lose by putting the law. Um, let's look at somebody to read Luke chapter 16, verse 16. Again, I'm sharing about how to apply the keys to the kingdom. And on this case, we're try learning how to apply Revelation 5, verse 10. Why are we made to be priests and kings? I was just thinking about that. And many people know scriptures, but they do not know how to apply it. Many people have a keys, but they have a wrong lock. They cannot unlock anything. You have so many scriptures, but you cannot unlock a thing because you don't have the right rock. You may have the key, the scriptures, but you don't have the rock. Uh, I would like somebody to read Luke chapter 16, verse 16. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Luke 16, verse 16. Luke chapter the law. 16, verse 16. Yeah. The law and the prophets were until John. Since that time, the kingdom of God is preached and every man press it into it. Now, the law, the law was, do you know why John was called the greatest prophet? John the Baptist? Because he's the man that lived in the New Testament and in the Old Testament at the same time. Actually, John the Baptist is considered to be living in the Old Testament, even if his writings are in the New Testament. He's the one that lived in the Old Covenant, but he also saw the Lord, who is the New Covenant to come, and he baptized the Lord. Now, the law or the prophet was the taller, was the taller, and this is what the Muslim follow, and this is what the Jewish people follow. But, but since the time of Jesus, the law that has become the law is the gospel of the kingdom. God does not want you to live under the law. He wants you to live under the kingdom. The purposes of Jesus coming on earth is to bring the kingdom of God. Is to bring the kingdom of God on earth. Now, what is the kingdom? The kingdom is understanding the mind of the king. The kingdom is understanding the traditions and the laws of the king. Who gives the traditions? Who gives the laws? Is the king that lays out those traditions. And God has called us to be priests and kings. So we are to implement the traditions of God's kingdom into our lives and become our traditions, becomes our law. And now this is, this is, this is the, the thing that God wants you to understand. Some of you just understand law, but you have to understand the kingdom of grace. God has forgiven you. God is not mad at you. God is with you. And you have to understand that the gospel of law, the Lord Jesus Christ is the gospel of love. And it's the gospel of the intimacy relationship with God.
God sent Jesus not just to shed the blood, his blood, not just so he can be, he can suffer and resurrected. All those things are important, but that's not what he came for. He did not just come to shed the blood of his son. He did not just come so that his son can suffer. He did not just come so that he can be raised from the dead. He, the main reason he came so that you can become a king. You can take back your dominion. You can take back your inheritance. Do you know that the earth is our inheritance? The enemy has stolen the earth, the kingdom of God is your inheritance. That's what scripture says. The earth is our inheritance. Now understand that the blood is very important. The sufferings of Jesus are very important, but they are pointing you to the main thing, relationship to be restored with God. They are pointing you to the main thing, the grace of God to be restored for God. In other ways, not based on works, but based on relationship. Some of you are still beating yourself over your past sins, over things of the past. Let me tell you, because of the blood, because of his suffering, the grace of Jesus Christ has been released to you. And therefore, you have not just received the law of the prophet. You have received the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is not being sin conscious. The kingdom of God is being the presence conscious, is being Jesus conscious, is being love conscious, is being heaven conscious. In fact, God's plan is not for you to just go to heaven, but so that you may learn, you may rule on earth. I would like you to read again, uh, Revelation chapter 5 verse 10. I want you to get something there that the purpose why Jesus came is to restore the kingdom of God on earth. What people are busy, let me die and go to heaven tomorrow. No, 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 no. You have to be alive and bring the kingdom of God here on earth. Can somebody read it again? Revelation chapter 5 verse 10. I'm getting excited. Revelation but, 5 verse 10. Yes. And has made us unto our God kings and priests. And we shall reign on the earth. And we shall reign on the earth. Some of you say we shall reign in heaven. That's why you're busy lashing to go to heaven. No, we have work on earth. We become only priests and kings on earth. We shall reign on earth. We need to take back our earth. We need to take back our dominion. We need to take back what God gave us, what is light ours, and the kingdom of heaven that is living in us is our inheritance to be enriched on earth. And the whole earth must come to know Jesus. And God has given us soldiers. He has given us military intelligences. He has given us angels of war. All these soldiers and angels of war. You are the child of the kingdom. You're not just a warrior. You're not just a soldier of Christ. You are the child of God. God has given you angels to be soldiers. God has given you angels to war, war on your behalf. What we are lacking is to be a son. What we are lacking is to be a daughter. The, the, the biggest problem we have, we don't know how to be a son. We want to be warriors. We want to be soldiers. Uh, we want to be servants. Uh, but God wants you to be his daughter. God wants you to be his son that is, knows how to war, knows how to fight, knows how to serve knows how to love but the first thing is none of those things the first thing is for you to learn to be the daughter of god oh learn to be god's daughter learn to be god's son oh when you know god is your father and he loves you what a blessed assurance what a blessed assurance that a heavenly father is your internal father. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
blessed Holy Spirit. It's very important for you. You understand how to use the kingdom of God keys. Most people are very upset. They're afraid of the devil because they, they don't understand that you are the daughter of God. The devil cannot just touch you. You are the son of God. A son in the house is greater than a servant. A daughter in the house is greater than the servant. You have to understand we have a slave mentality when we approach God. We need to have a daughtership mentality and a sonship mentality. The, that's how the Bible says he, when John 1, this 12, he came to give us the power to be called children of God, sons and daughters of God. You Now, a daughter has got the rights and the son has got the right in the house of his father. You have to understand, you have to understand these principles. If you don't understand, you will have this slave mentality of just living under the law, but instead of living like a king, you have to understand that God, he has soldiers for you. That's angels that fight for you. And again, you have to understand that the kingdom of God is your inheritance. It's not something you labor for. It's something you just receive. And also you have to understand that we are to preach the kingdom of God, not our own desires, not our own mind. We are to preach the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God. God, the father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Daughter of God, the father has in priest has been priest to give you the kingdom of God. Son of God. God has given you the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is our inheritance today. That's why we struggle. With, that's why we are insecure. That's why we envy. That's why we are jealous of our brothers because we don't understand the richness, the wealthness of the kingdom of God, that you being his son and his daughter, God will never leave you. But we love living under the law of the prophets and the kingdom, the law of law, but God wants you to live under the kingdom, under the kingdom, he says he has in a, in Luke 16 verse 16 is very powerful. It says he has given us the kingdom of the good news, the kingdom of the good news. I believe God's original plan is for us to inherit the earth. And that's why there's so much battle when it comes to taking your own dominion on earth. But you have to understand that the spiritual battle is real, but also your authority is very real. The spiritual blessings are real. Physical blessings are also real, but you must learn that these things, they belong to you because you are the son. People are so afraid. These days, people are afraid of the economy. They're afraid in the states they are living in. They're afraid of everything. Why should you fear when you are God's kingdom? Why should you fear when you belong to the kingdom that will never be defeated? When you belong to the kingdom that will never be defeated, you cannot be defeated. You should have a peace of mind today when you go to bed that no devil can enter your room and destroy you because you have the military forces. You have military forces all around you. You have guards. 
that look after you, spiritual gods. Doesn't matter how poor you are in the natural, but in the spirit, you are very wealthy. You have bodyguards that look after you against the powers of darkness. You are not on your own child of God. God is with you. Remove the fear. The, the country of America will be just fine. Your church will be just fine. Your life will just be fine. Do not be brainwashed with the fear of the, of the ungodly, wildly news. You have to listen to the good news of heaven that you are undefeatable. You are the child of God. You must learn how to apply the keys of the kingdom that you are powerful. You are the power of God on earth. You are the healer of God on earth. You are a miracle of God on earth. You are a breakthrough on earth through Jesus Christ, through the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is here on earth so that scriptures can begin to work. Scriptures are keys. Scriptures are, are, are words that will unlock, but you must understand your right failing to understand your right will it's like having a key with the wrong rock you are trying to open i don't know have you ever been in the situation where you you have lost a key and you are trying to open a door with the wrong key and the key is not going in you're trying no matter how you try it's not working you're just trying you're just trying trying Maybe it's supposed to use a small key to unlock something. You use a big key. It's not working. But if you have the right key, you just go in. Shh. You just open. Having the right scriptures with the right revelation, it's having the right lock and the right key to unlock your life and to unlock your future. Do not be religious. Be, have, read this. Do not read scriptures religiously. Read scriptures rationally and with the help of the Holy Spirit, with the anointing of God. Some of you need to anoint your eyes. Lord, anoint my eyes. Even as I open the word today, I will see what you want me to see. If you are reading an audio, just say, Lord, anoint my ears as they hear the gospel i will not misinterpret it i will not receive it religiously but i will receive it as a daughter of god and as a son of god these are instruction from my father these are instruction from my dad you when you begin to approach the word of god as the word from the king your dad as your words from your father in heaven things will begin to change in your life. The approach is different. You will never live another day of defeat. No matter how bad condition you are in, you will be victorious. You will be victorious because you understand the kingdom of God and he is preached to every man on earth, the kingdom of God. Because men do not need law. That's why a judgmental gospel is not really complete gospel. You know, there are people who are always preaching dooms and hell, hell and brimstone every day. And they do pretty much. They have a lot of fear. They're just judging. They pick up the name of their next another preacher. They judge this one. They pick up with the name of somebody. They judge this one. The gospel is not to, to pick names and try criticizing them for how much sinful they are, how wrong they are on our platform. We are to preach the kingdom of God. We are to preach those gossip and gaslighting of other people will not help you. But what will help you is what is in Luke 16, verse 16, to preach the kingdom of God, to preach the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God brings life. 
the kingdom of God brings repentance. The kingdom of God brings healing. The kingdom of God brings restoration. The kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is not just there to expose sin, but to bring a cure to your sin, to, to your sin by you being a new person in 2 Corinthians. Corinthians 5 verse 17, if anyone is in Christ, is a new being. Some of you don't want other people to become new creatures. You want to keep seeing them in their old sins so that you keep harassing them. How bad they are. But God wants to completely destroy that old page and create a new page, a blank page that is so clean and so new. This is the kingdom of God, the kingdom of grace, the kingdom of love, the kingdom of power, and the kingdom of forgiveness, and the kingdom of great supply of resources, the kingdom of, right? You know, when the Bible talks about the righteous, the word righteous means having the right standing with God and the right standing with man. But not everyone will have a right standing with you because some people have already made up their mind to come against you and you can't change their will. Just leave them and let them go. Do not forget, oh, they might taint my name. No, forget it. If they try to do that, God, angels will be on their case. You have to learn to let go. But those that need to be reconciled, you reconcile with them. Do not try to change what you cannot change. Leave to God what you cannot change. And that which you can change, you can live it, you can do it to yourself. God wants you to come out of imprisonment of certain relationships, certain friendship that have imprisoned you for years. You don't understand the kingdom of grace releases you into those wrong things, in those wrong relationships, and brings you to a place of peace. Peace, shalom, means nothing missing, nothing broken. In other words, the peace of God will heal the broken, will put the, the broken pieces together, will heal your heart, will heal your mind. That's the peace of God. The peace of God does not just con convince you mentally that this is the right thing, but it transforms you to become the righteousness of God, to become the right thing. You don't become the right thing because how many of you have tried to do the right thing to the right people and it turned out to be the, right, the wrong thing? You try to do the wrong, the right thing, every time but to the person maybe you do the right thing by giving somebody money then tomorrow they are using it for drugs you did the right thing by giving it but they use it for drugs and that has destroyed their lives you know you give your cousin or your son money you want to do that and then it's the right thing to do then they use it for drugs so you find that doing the right thing it's not always the right thing. It's doing the right thing at the right time to the right person. And that's the right thing to do. That's just the wisdom from above. You have to understand that that's why grace is so powerful. It enables you to do the right thing at the right time. You have to understand that our walk with God is the walk of the kingdom. In the kingdom, there is only kings. There is only princesses and prince. God wants you to understand the concept of loyalty. How to walk in loyalty. Princesses are not afraid when they are walking. They have guards around them. Prince, they're not afraid when they are walking. They have bodyguards around them. Why should you fear? When you are the daughter of the kingdom, why should you fear when God is calling you to become the kingdom of God? 
the kingdom of God. Learning how to use the keys of the kingdom will lead you into major freedom. You must understand that the earth is your inheritance. So do not apologize for being wealthy. Do not apologize to having a lot of money. Do not apologize because God is going to use everything you have through God's riches to fulfill God's desire. Let me just say it. Through kingdom's desire to be fulfilled on earth through you. God has got dreams and God has got visions and he will fulfill them on earth through his son and his daughter. Amen. I want to pray for you now. I know we almost, we're already five. I want to pray for you. Um, what I want to do now, I want to pray that you have understanding of the kingdom. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you today. I pray that you give them a spiritual ear to receive what I've shared and give them a heart of understanding and give them a wisdom to apply in all they're getting of this word. Let them get understanding, Lord, and deep insight. I pray, Father, that you bless your people and those that are going to watch later on YouTube, pray that you touch their lives, touch their finances. And Lord, I just pray, remove every darkness, every false gospel, that the true gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ be released on earth through them. They make kingdom of heaven to be preached throughout the earth. And Lord, I pray for the people that are struggling. I pray for a breakthrough. I pray, answer their prayers. Pray for the spirit of provision in every area of your need. Protection, favor, financial supply, health, healing, healing of relationship. Lord, I just pray that you release the presence of God, the peace upon your heart, your mind. Release it, Lord. As I feel your anointing, I just pray that, Lord, you will release this anointing into their homes, into their lives, in Jesus' mighty name. Now, I want you to understand kingdom giving. One thing I love about the kingdom, you can't go to see the king with a cheap gift. Every time you go and see a king, you have to give something of pricey, something of their value. Today we have approached before the kingdom of God, our king, the king of kings and the Lord of lords. I would like you to give pricely into the kingdom of God and let the heart of the king be praised and he will bless you Good measure, shaken together, an overflow of blessing. I pray right now that they'll, the doors that have been locked, they'll be unlocked. Finances that have been not been flowing, they'll begin to flow. Things that have been complicated will become better. Father, I just pray for the keys of the kingdom of God in the area of finances, in the area of success, to be released upon their lives. In Jesus' mighty name. I pray for Deuteronomy 1, verse 11. May the Lord make you fruitful. May the Lord multiply you a thousand times more. May the Lord multiply you a thousand times more. May the Lord multiply you a thousand, multi, a thousand times more. Sheke, lebo, korobo. I declare Deuteronomy 1, verse 11. Let God release a thousand times more. Father, you promised, you are God of the promise and you never break the promise. Today, I pray that you release the blessing upon your children now as they give 
In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. And uh, yeah, there are different ways you can give. Uh, you can give by PayPal. Uh, PayPal, his presence. Uh, his presence fire at gmail.com. You can do also um, Venmo. You can also do Venmo, his presence fire. You can also do Zell. Zell is fire, 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 three fires. Fire, 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 love at gmail.com. Um, that is Zell. And you can, you can also let us know if you want to write a check or other things. Um, Father, thank you. Father, bless your people today. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. For you online. Um, yeah, they call me just send thing on the chat how you can give. That makes it easier for you. Thanks to call me for doing that. Um, thank you, Father. We give you all the praise and all the glory.